Grace, it's something basic that people here that are trying to drive the centers of excellence that we're doing, Port San Antonio is one that without a doubt, the, what we're doing right now with the biotech, um, even with uh, our aerospace initiatives that we're driving, as well as uh, the Brooks, and everywhere we go, it's really exciting, and I feel that energy uh, from the city, and I started, in Miami, I started the NAP of the Americas, the Network Access Point, which is the fifth largest uh, communication hub in the world. And we started with just an investment. We did something really big. Miami's now the technology hub of Latin America, and it took 20 years. But once we create the, the atmosphere, what we call, what Jenna Herrera Salcedo calls the uh, community of preference, then everybody's gonna come and wanna stay here. And I think that's what you're all about. Your leaders, in your generation of what this whole city is going to look like. And I know we work a lot right now, the STEM tech project that we do once a year, it's going to be November, the week of the November 5th through the 9th. We're going to bring all the city, anybody that touches uh, tech as it relates to in some capacity, whether directly or indirectly, is going to be involved in that to show the city that we're committed. And I think that's what's really exciting about what we're trying to do as a city. And again, we, we calculated if the seventh and eighth graders who we target uh, basically stayed here and they actually followed the tracks in STEM, they'd be 28, 27, 28 years old before 2030. So we can make an impact with them and the idea too is we're probably gonna look at probably importing a lot of high-skilled uh, workers on the, in the temp, uh, tech side. But again, recognize our, I have two children, 32 and 34, and they're both in the tech sector. My daughter's with a company called Gimlet out of New York that was just acquired by Spotify, a Swedish company. Uh, they have 13 floors in the World Trade Center in New York City now. And my son's in cybersecurity. So the kind of opportunities that they've realized because of what they've done and what they're exposed to, they jump jobs every two or three years. <laughs> and it's, it's so exciting the fact that you can live any part and place in the world. And also, I left at age one and I came back. And I came back because I think San Antonio has a lot to offer in the sense of the, the culture, the, the environment that we're different. We can form a city in San Antonio the way I saw us do San Francisco, New York, and Miami around some of the tech communities, I don't think anybody else competes uh, with what we can do here. So again, uh, stay here, go, if you can get your education, stay here as long as you can, come back, go back. Uh, I think it's gonna be a little bit of both, but you're, you're gonna find that you're always gonna come back. And I think that's what, what's really exciting. And I wanna congratulate you if you're, when I saw the titles, I told Dr. Reina, oh my God, that is so smart to basically use that kind of uh, title and I'm curious to talk to you to see what kind of interest you've been able to create within your peers and the schools that you represent. But this is only going to get better. And trust me, I've had a wonderful life uh, in the tech sector, uh, being able to influence people's lives and build. Um, what, I would, what I did most of my career is I built submarine cable systems and infrastructure. Most of the broadband in the U.S. my teams built and in Latin America. Now I'm still building submarine cable systems from Europe to Africa and South America with, as an independent director. But it never ends. It's always you're always evolving with something else because the aptitude that you have in technology is something that nobody ever can ever take away from you. And obviously, for you to be at this level, you have that aptitude if you're going to be sought out. But congratulations! I'm real excited about being here, and I appreciate that Dr. Reina thought about about me for participating. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Diane, especially for your vision for our community and our city. I know we'll go uh, really far along those lines with your leadership, so thank you very much. Uh, you know, what, as I mentioned, uh, getting a chance to interact with our chief science officers this past February was uh, really an honor and a great experience. And uh, as basically um, our next person is going to speak to you, I'm not sure how we're going to handle the mic in a few minutes, but uh, we, we uh, basically, was, she was uh, Alicia de Hoyos, was part of the first CSO cohort, and um, she was selected uh, as one of the CSOs to be part of the CSO Leadership Council, as was uh, Mr. Ernest back here, who's back behind me, you can barely see, but uh, so that out of 36 students who are all leaders from across, you know, uh, different school districts and di different uh, schools, including uh, Keystone, by the way, um, the, the, there was a group of, uh, you know, five that we had, of course, Alexis and Kelly was uh, here working with us as well, but the ones that will continue through, they're still in, in uh, high school or middle school, uh, to be part of that leadership council. Um, Alicia is a prep student, and I know there are other prep students here, and I'm sure, uh, of course, uh, I know that Chris's uh, daughters were, were involved in the prep as well, so that's always a, a great thing. And 
because it's about problem solving